Imagine waking up on New Year's Day at 6.15 a.m. The night before was pretty wild. You're not feeling so great. So you hobble into the bathroom to wash your face and brush your teeth. The year is 2100, and this is how your morning might unfold. Leaving the bathroom, you wrap some wires around your head, which allow you to telepathically control your home. You mentally raise the temperature of the apartment, turn on some soothing music, tell the robotic cook in your kitchen to make breakfast and brew some coffee. And you also order your magnetic car to leave the garage and be ready to pick you up. As you enter the kitchen, you see the mechanical arms of the robotic cook preparing eggs just the way you like them. According to physicist Michio Kaku, that's his voice you just heard, all the technology for that scenario exists. It exists now. And he's written about it in his new book that lays out what to expect over the next hundred years. It's called Physics of the Future. And he says, brace yourself for everything from telepathically fried eggs to invisibility cloaks to a doubling of your lifespan to contact lenses that will enable us to have the Internet in our eyeball. <laughs> We're talking about blinking and you are online. So, so it would be like inserting a colored contact lens, except uh, it's going to be the Internet in that contact lens. And think of what you can do. When you meet somebody, your contact lens will identify who that person is, print out their biography <laughs> next to that person's image, and then translate from Chinese into English or whatever as the person is speaking. Uh, and, and that printer, uh, will, the, the printed uh, material will come out from our ears? or uh, No, it will be no. right in your contact lens. Oh, now, remember the movie Terminator <laughs> yes. where Arnold Schwarzenegger sees a person? Immediately you see the description who that person is. Well, in the future, you will have it. You will know exactly who you're talking to, what they are saying in any language as they are saying it. And we have prototypes of this today. This is not science fiction. This is something that people are really working on. The scientist is really working on that. People are really working on it. The Pentagon is working on it. They have a version of it where your contact lens lays out the whole battlefield. You're a physicist. You're a bona fide physicist. You're a well-respected physicist. Uh, people know who you are. Explain to me how somebody will be able to invent an invisibility cloak, which you write about in the book. Doesn't that defy the, the laws of physics? I teach optics at the university, and for years I used to teach the kids that invisibility was not possible. Yeah. Well, I was wrong. And so is every single physics textbook on the planet huh. Earth. Wrong. When light hits you, light cannot wrap around your body and reform at the other end. Light cannot do that. Right. But scientists discovered a new substance called metamaterials, which allows that very fact. Light then wraps around your body, reforms at the other end as if you don't exist. Now, remember that the Pentagon has spent hundreds of millions of dollars perfecting stealth technology. Right. And these airplanes are visible. It's that under radar, it's hard to see. It has the image of a large bird. So this is the real McCoy. This is the Harry Potter invisibility cloak. Now, we're not going to have it for several decades, but the basic principles have been proven in mm. the laboratory. Every physics textbook on the planet Earth is now being rewritten. I'm speaking with Michio Kaku. He's the author of the new book called Physics of the Future. He's also a professor of physics at the City University of New York and the host of the Sci-Fi Science Program on the Science Channel. Uh, Michio Kaku, um, you write that um, within 100 years, we will view chemotherapy as a treatment for cancer similarly to the way we view leeches of the last centuries. That's right. What killed George Washington? You might be shocked to realize that George Washington was bled to death. Right. That's how he yes. died. Because back in those days, that was medicine, leeches and bloodletting. In the future, we'll view chemotherapy the same way because we will create smart bombs that knock out cancer cells individually. And believe it or not, we have them already. In trial hmm. tests, up to 90% of cancer cells can be zapped by nanoparticles. This is going to be big, real big. Take a molecule, for example, right. very tiny. And cancer cells have large holes, pores in their surface, raggedy large holes. Ordinary cells have smaller round holes, not these raggedy holes. Let's say you create a molecule that's in between the two. Okay. That means it cannot get into a normal cell, but slips right into a cancer cell. Wow. This is going to change everything. And how will you detect cancer? By going to the bathroom and using your toilet. Hmm. We have things called DNA chips that are so accurate, using tiny transistor-like things, we can pick up individual cancer cells, one out of a billion. 
In fact, Mass General Hospital in Boston, in three years' time, may begin to market these things on the market. They already exist. They already, everything in the book already exists. I am not a science fiction writer. I am a physicist. And we already have nanoparticles that can zero in on a cancer cell. They've been tested and proven. Now, I know you're a physicist, and you're not an ethicist. I'm not saying you're not an ethical guy, because I know you are. I've talked to you before. Uh, but um, if there are microchips or chips embedded in our toilets and in the mirrors of our homes and in our bodies, what about our privacy? What about our ability to be individuals? I mean, it seems, and I, I hesitate to use it, but it seems big brotherish. Well, you know, when the Internet was first created, it really might have become a big brother. But in 1989, something happened which changed world history. With the breakup of the Soviet bloc, the National Science Foundation decided to give the Internet away for free. That changed human history because it meant that a force of democracy was given to the peoples of the world. And also, when faced with new inventions like this, people are a little bit afraid. But just remember that when electricity was first harnessed by Thomas Edison, people were very afraid of electricity. They thought it was intrusive. It's going to go right into your living room. People will be electrocuted. And houses will burn down. That's what the critics said. Well, you know something? The critics were absolutely right on every single point. Houses burn down every day because of electricity. Yes, people get electrocuted in their living rooms every day. Yes, electricity is everywhere. And you know something? We love it. So many of the inventions that I talk about in this book, some people may feel, ooh, I mean, that's a little scary, right? But hey, you get used to it. And then later you say to yourself, how could I have lived without it? It's Michio Kaku. He's a professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York. His new book is called Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny in Our Daily Lives by the Year 2100. Michio Kaku, thank you so much. Been a real pleasure.